I want to welcome everybody to the 13th Annual Dias Symposium. It's the first time we've been here in three years. It's great to have you back, and I hope you have a... I hope you have a wonderful time. I'm going to introduce the honorees in a little while, but first of all, I've got to mention a few people who are in the audience. There is a Dias in the audience named Brett Dias. Will he hold up his hand? And there he is. He's, he, there is a Connor Dias Smith, who is my wife of 63 years, and she deserves a round of applause. I think. Other people from out of town I want to introduce is Pat Finneran and his wife, Pamela Johnson. Would you hold up your hands, please? <laughs> Pat Finneran is a Marine, had combat experience in Vietnam, and has recently been selected and elected and enshrined in the Georgia Aviation Hall of Fame. So congratulations to you. And now I want to introduce the representative for Fort Gordon, Brigadier General Christine Rummel, and she's right here in front in a uniform. <laughs> and she represents Fort Gordon, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Navy, because they're all out there, and also Cyber Command. So she has a lot on her shoulders, and we're glad to have her, uh, General Rummel. Okay. So I think that's probably enough for now, and we want to go ahead with the ceremony. So I'm now going to open my program and try to remember what I'm supposed to do. Now, I, I got to tell you, I'm sitting up here on a high deal. That's because I'm 88 years old, and I don't work pretty well. My legs don't work very well, so forgive me for that. I would like, uh, first of all, to have the presentation of the colors, if we would all stand, please, if you're able. could have the Pledge of Allegiance. applause to the North Costa Junior ROTC. I would now like to ask you to sit, please. And the Reverend Eric Biddy from St. Paul's Church will lead us in the invocation. Next, we have a real special event. Most of you know who jo uh, Russell Joel Brown is. He was a 
Broadway star. He is a Broadway star from The Lion King and so forth. And he's going to lead us in a song with Keith Schaefer as his accompaniment. Please. because he's going to sing some more later in the program. And thank you so much, both of you, and we'll get you again. We're now going to get a film. It's a film that runs about eight or nine minutes. It tells the Jimmy Dias story, but I'd like you to pay a particular attention to the last part of the film because it talks about the new marker that we have placed at Sullivan's Island at the spot that he saved the two lives in 1928. So if we could run the film, please. It's well known throughout the Augusta area that Jimmy Dias is the only person in history to have received America's two highest awards for heroism, the Carnegie Medal and the Medal of Honor. What is not widely known are his many other accomplishments. His heroism started early. In fact, at the age of 13, he saved someone from drowning. 
He earned the rank of Eagle Scout the following year, a very special accomplishment for someone so young. At the Academy of Richmond County, he was a cadet officer, a scholar, and a fine athlete. Later at Clemson College, he was a high-ranking officer in the Clemson Cadet Corps, a varsity football player, and an All-American marksman. In 1930, Dias led the Southeast College team to victory in the National Marksmanship Championship at Camp Perry. At age 19, Jimmy was walking on the beach at Sullivan's Island when he saw that two swimmers were in trouble. Without hesitation, he swam far out to try to assist them. The long swim back with two women in tow was exhausting. For his successful act of selfless valor, he received the Carnegie Medal. Dias was a very modest man. Many of his closest friends did not know he had earned this iconic medal. In 1934, at the First Presbyterian Church in Augusta, he married Connor Cleckley. In 1936, he became a member of the Marine Corps Reserves and a leader of its highly ranked marksmanship team. With war clouds on the horizon in the autumn of 1940, First Lieutenant Jimmy Dias was called to active duty. Dias quickly moved up the ranks. By the spring of 1943, he was a lieutenant colonel in command of a battalion of 800 troops in the 24th Marine Regiment. He commanded with great confidence and compassion. He loved his troops, and his troops loved him. In January 1944, the 4th Marine Division sailed from San Diego. The destination, the Japanese-held Marshall Islands. Dias led his Marines from the front as his battalion stormed onto the heavily defended island of Roy Namur. As dusk approached on the first day of the battle, he realized that Marines from another battalion were in serious trouble. Fighting his way through enemy lines, Dias rescued four seriously wounded Marines who were surrounded by the enemy. On the last day of the battle, as he was leading his men against a Japanese pillbox, Jimmy Dias was shot and killed. A few months later in Augusta, his wife, Connor, received the Medal of Honor. Jimmy's younger sister, Sarah Ewing, often commented that there was a pattern in Jimmy's life. From an early age, whenever anyone was in danger, he felt compelled to take action, no matter the risk. Jimmy Dias's heroism has been recognized many times since his death in 1944. Shortly after the battle, the airfield on Roy Namur was named in his honor. Dias Field remains active today in support of space activities of NASA and the military services. The ship, the USS Dias, was commissioned in 1945. This destroyer served America for 36 years and saw action in the Vietnam War. In 1997, the headquarters of the 24th Marines in Kansas City was named in his honor. In 1998, the Jimmy Dias Parkway in Augusta was opened. In 2004, Clemson University awarded Dias its highest award, the Doctorate of Humane Letters. In 2005, on the second floor of the Augusta Museum of History, a permanent exhibit was opened. This exhibit honors Dias and two ships, the USS Augusta and the USS Dias. In 2011, the first Jimmy Dias Symposium was held. Every year at this symposium, a Medal of Honor recipient is honored for his lifetime of contributions to America and his fellow citizens. Also at this symposium, two outstanding citizens who have a connection to the Augusta area are honored. In 2015, the book Courage, Compassion, Marine, The Unique Story of Jimmy Dias was published. Also in 2015, a revised version of the DVD Twice a Hero was released. On August 9th, 2022, a historical marker was dedicated at Sullivan's Island, South Carolina, 
just a short distance from where Dias rescued two women from drowning in 1928. Nearly 200 people, including many military and civic leaders, attended the unveiling ceremony, which took place near the boardwalk at station 18 and a half. This two-sided cast aluminum marker is designed to last for over a century. It displays a color image of Jimmy Dias when he was a student at Clemson. Also displayed are the emblems of the Medal of Honor, Carnegie Medal, and the Eagle Scout Award. This is the ideal location for beachgoers to view both sides of the marker. In the decades ahead, thousands of people, young and old, will learn the remarkable story of Jimmy Dias. In summary, Augustine Jimmy Dias epitomizes the nobility of public service. It is most fitting that his legacy is preserved. It is hoped that Marine Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Dias will serve as an inspiration for all, and most importantly, as a role model for young Americans for decades to come. Augusta for the Jimmy Dias Symposium, the 12th edition, and we're very, very pleased to have Pat Knox Hudson as our first guest, and I want to ask her a few questions. The first question I want to ask is, tell me about your life, where you grew up, and, and what got you to Augusta? Oh, well, I was a native Mississippian, uh, then, to, then to Gastonia, North Carolina, when uh, December the 7th, 1941, my father immediately went into the Navy. We moved to Charleston Navy Yard and spent all four years there because he was an engineer and repaired and built ships. And at the end of the war, moved to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and that's what I call really home because that's where I uh, mostly grew up, finished school, married Pete, and um, uh, after graduate school, moved at uh, Pete's graduate school, moved to Thompson and then Augusta. In 1963, we moved to Augusta. And what was the first time that you got involved in worthy causes here in Augusta? The first board I was on was the Bethlehem Community Center, and I just fell in love with that place. And uh, I did the music there in the kindergarten. And, um, and then I, uh, that sort of led me into a relationship with a lady named Faith Birchie, who was a member of the Augusta Friends Meeting, Quaker. And she asked me would I be interested in help starting a open, the Open Door Community, the first, not communities, uh, school an open door kindergarten, the first one in Augusta, an integrated kindergarten. And we did that and it opened in 1964. And was that church based or was it uh, based not on church? No, it was not church based. At, at that time, we really had a hard time finding a church that would let us do it. But the Unitarians opened up their wonderful building and that's where the first uh, it was nursery school and kindergarten. I see. And has that continued on through the it's years? It's still going. But it went from there to uh, the temple. But now it has moved, and I've lost touch. But it's been a wonderful kindergarten all these years. OK, and then tell me what the next issue that you got involved in. Well, um, Sacred Heart. <laughs> and that was, um, uh, I used to love to ride past it and see the nuns still in their habits outside playing with the children. And then when it was closed and it started going downhill, that just broke my heart. So I started, um, I guess you could say nagging uh, Pete and his brother and my father-in-law. And, and I saw they, um, the Knox Foundation bought it and and we've been working with it ever since. 
It's one of the great triumphs, it seems to me, of saving that beautiful building. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And besides you, who were the main uh, players in making sure that happened? Pete? Pete and Boone and my father-in-law, Pete Knox, mm -hmm. Jr. Well, I congratulate you on that. Now, tell me what other things have you been involved in? Well, um, the, the Jesse Norman School, and um, that is an after-school program for um, children that might not have the advantage of being able to take music or <laughs> acting or, um, and so we open that and we don't charge anything. We depend on <laughs> gifts and it has been a wonderful success. We have a, a good, um, Jesse Norman had given us some seed money and then uh, Dr. Linda Scales was the one who kind of got that started. And, um, and uh, but now the, our, the head of the school is Gary Dennis, who's doing a great job. They, so um, that continues on. Oh yes, it's going strong. Okay, now <laughs> what's, what, what's the next one you've been involved in? <laughs> well, um, I, I love music. So I've been a part of the Augusta Choral Society and, and our friends group, um, Jane Howington and I got that little friends group started and all of that's still going on. So, what, the, Tell me a little bit about the friends group. What, what is that? Oh, that's just a support group for the, um, the Choral Society. They pr help provide refreshments for when we have parties and if we need to have a place for um, a guest soloist to stay, we provide, open up our homes and things like that. And what about, I see some other things here. What about the Family Counseling Center? Oh, well that is, uh, too is a wonderful organization. And um, it, it was just provides uh, help for people that are having emotional or emotional type problems mm -hmm. and uh, at, for, at a, and it's not a costly thing to get help mm -hmm. there. But I have not been on that board for a good while, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, it's still going strong. And so what boards are you serving on presently? I am, I guess you would say emerita. I've been saying um, um, emerita. The masculine form, right. but now I'm just um, on the doing uh, Sacred Heart, Jesse Norman School, and the Friends of the Choral Society. And what I think about that's your, all. What about your relationship with uh, St. Paul's Tuesday Music Live? Well, I was on that board for a while. We, you know, we just helped Keith. Um, get supporters for those to sponsor the concerts. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been one of the great programs in Augusta. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's, I mean, we are so lucky in Augusta as far as music, uh, heavens. I mean, you can't yeah. do it all. You, you run out of time. Yeah. All right, it's great to have you here, Ed Gillespie from Augusta, Georgia, and we'd like the first question would be, tell me a little bit about your life, where you were brought up and how you ended up in Augusta. All right, uh, Perry, I'm a Yankee. I grew up in Minnesota, uh, northern Minnesota for the first uh, number of years, graduated from Pine City High School, went to uh, University of Minnesota Duluth for my undergraduate work, and then the university in Minneapolis for my graduate work. And then your jobs that you had following that? Oh, I just kept moving around, Perry. I, um, actually, before I um, went into uh, my career, I did some work over in Austria with a refugee program uh, with the Methodist Church and the World Council of Churches. and. Um, 
Uh, that was uh, quite fulfilling. Then uh, my first job was out in Denver as an assistant administrator at, uh, at uh, Lutheran Hospital. Then I went with the Methodist Board of uh, Hospitals and Homes for a number of years uh, as the associate uh, general secretary. Then went to, un to the um, uh, Methodist Hospital in Rochester, Minnesota, that part of the Mayo Clinic. And then I came to Augusta, Georgia. And for the last uh, 45 years, I've been in Augusta, Georgia. And what, what, what was the major motivations for you to come out of the Northwest and come to Augusta? You know, <clears throat> uh, in hospital administration, you, you move around uh, at least uh, three or four times before you find uh, uh, a more permanent uh, location. Um, I was um, impressed by um, the interviews that I had with the local people. I was impressed by the, the potential for the hospital. And um, I was ready to um, take on more major responsibilities. I see. And tell me, of all the things that you have accomplished here in Augusta over the last many years, which ones were the ones that you felt were the most important? Well, you know, uh, the hospital accomplished a lot, and of course, um, no one person's involved in directing the hospital. It involves a lot of people from the board of, of directors uh, to the administrative staff to, the, to, to all of the, the workers. Uh, developing a local county hospital into a major medical center was um, a fairly um, rewarding experience. And um, that was done because we were able to convert the hospital from an uh, old authority hospital to a nonprofit uh, voluntary hospital that represented the entire community. Um, it, was, um, it was a good experience and, and um, the hospital is a real credit to the community. And what about other things that you uh, have accomplished, or you and your team? Well, you know, uh, the development of the blood center, uh, I think, was, um, uh, was a, a, an important event for the community. Uh, uh, there were many of us that were involved in that, but it was uh, an important step uh, for the community. Um, the, uh, rehabilitation Hospital, uh, Walton Rehab, um, uh, Brandon Wild, um, uh, Health Central, all of those uh, uh, services came out of the hospital's uh, long-range plan that was developed uh, back in the, um, the mid-70s. And did you get many of those ideas from where you had been before, or did you get the ideas out of Augusta? Well, you know, <clears throat> Um, most ideas come from other people. And um, looking around the country, of course, you saw programs that had developed uh, uh, before we were able to develop similar programs. So you, you have some prototypes that you try to follow. Uh, we did some visitation and some of those uh, centers. So you, yeah, I guess a combination of both, Perry. And did you, did you have difficulty with bureaucracy, particularly at the state level, in trying to get these changes through? Well, the biggest problem we had, uh, and I guess it's probably um, um, a, a, an example of not doing communication properly, um, we did not get the support from the newspaper, for example, or from the county commission as we made the transition from a, an authority hospital to a uh, nonprofit voluntary hospital. The reason we had to do that was because the old authority law, which was developed uh, after the war, um, restricted uh, authority hospitals from services outside of the county. Well, of course, Modern health care, modern medical centers require a lot of uh, um, satellite services. 
you know, more than 50% of the, our patients at University, University Hospital came from uh, outside Richmond County. So it was important for us to expand our services to South Carolina and to Columbia County and, and other surrounding counties. Were you ever, ever able to get the newspaper on your side? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They eventually um, uh, became very supportive of the efforts of the hospital. Okay. Other things that you have been involved in uh, for, in worthy causes here in Augusta or elsewhere? Well, you know, the Boy Scouts and the Chamber of Commerce and um, uh, programs like that, that that are so important to the community. Uh, I, I tried to be involved uh, as much as I could. Uh, and you were involved with the Rotary Club? Oh, well. yes, yes. I was president of the Rotary Club for, my, for one term. <laughs> I was uh, president of the uh, Georgia Hospital Association for two, two terms, uh, and that was very rewarding. So uh, anything else that you want to share with the audience that we're going to have on the 12th of January? Well, I can't think of anything specifically other than the fact that, you know, Augusta is a fine community. It's been um, uh, an excellent place to raise a family and to, uh, to play tennis uh, and to uh, do so many of the things that uh, this climate and this location um, uh, provides us. And, of course, the historical... Um, the h historical uh, place that Augusta has played in in this country is amazing, and and it's I'm I'm just proud to be a citizen of Augusta, Georgia. Okay, it's my great pleasure to introduce. Uh, Mike Rose, who is the recipient of a Medal of Honor and also the, will be the recipient of the Distinguished American Award from the Jimmy Dias Symposium. He's coming to us from Huntsville, Alabama, which is his home, and we're going to ask him to tell a little bit about his life and all the things that he has run into and contributed not only to the military but also to his community. So, Mike, it's over to you. Uh, well, I think I'll start. I uh, joined the Army in April of 1967 and went to Fort Ord then to Fort Gordon, and then jump school, and then special forces training. And after that, I was assigned to the 7th at Fort Bragg. And then I went to Thailand, Vietnam, Mac Sog, where I received these most of these awards. And uh, after that, I um, was stationed in Panama with the special forces group. And from there, I went to OCS and became a field artillery officer. And I served about just that 20 years and retired. And during that time frame, I was in Korea, Thailand, uh, Panama, and uh, Germany, in various places in the states like New Mexico, California, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Georgia, and what have you. Uh, after service, I um, worked as an instructional designer in the manufacturing industry, creating training and writing uh, maintenance manuals for manufacturing. And I did that up until, oh, I retired in 2010. Uh, last couple of years, I um, worked with Sherman Williams doing paint as an odd job just to keep myself busy. I think, Mar it's funny, Margaret found the job. It was like, a, it was like 20 hours a week. <laughs> I think she did that to get me out of the house for at least 20 hours a week. So, And what I've done uh, over the years, I've been in the Knights of Columbus, is primary focus on my charity. And uh, <clears throat> I've worked many years with them uh, raising funds for uh, such things as one of my favorite things is the intellectually disabled for um, adults, which is um, 18 and over, because a lot of people don't realize that once you become 18, a lot of the federal, almost all the federal and state funding for anybody that has a, a disability of such, it falls off the table. So it's left to churches and different organizations. And I will say that um, 
a lot of good companies, defense companies, uh, private companies, you know, markets uh, are very generous in supporting the ARC, which was here in Huntsville, ARC of Madison County, that does everything from um, education of caregivers to they have uh, employment opportunities they find for these individuals that gives them a sense of purpose. And, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, the, the, the young people and the older folks that are have mental, or I should say intellectually disabled issues, they're great employees. In fact, one of the things we found, it's kind of funny in a way, the only issue you have with them is to try, you have to get them to go home because if you didn't, they'd work till they dropped. And um, it gives them a sense of pride and uh, they pay taxes, they participate in community activities and it's just, a, it's just a great thing to see. And then one of my other things is I uh, work with uh, the Knights in supporting the Rose of Sharon, which um, takes care of some of the most vulnerable homeless in, the, in our town. And um, that was the Catholic Center of Concern, which they provide the medicine and those of Sharon feeds them. So, and they work with each other. And what's great about it is Rose Sharon's a Protestant organization. And of course the center is Catholic and they mutually support each other by uh, making sure people are healthy and are fed and have clothing because the Rose of Sharon does provide clothing. I, um, I'm also involved in a um, youth leadership development program, which was started by Dr. Welsh out of Birmingham. We now have 95 high schools and 27 universities. And we, um, it's a leadership program that starts in the ninth grade and it goes through the 12th and the seniors can apply for scholarships and they're fully funded scholarships that we offer. I have one at the University of Alabama. Gary Biker, another Mellon War Honor recipient, has one at Auburn. Uh, Benny Atkins, this program supports his um, Benny Atkins Foundation for uh, providing educational funding for special operations troops coming off of uh, active duty to, to supplement what they get from their benefits from the government and military service while they're going to school. And I'm a board member on that, and I um, we raise money. And one of the things that I'm so proud of this is that anybody who applies for this scholarship, it doesn't matter who your parents are, how much they make or don't make. We don't consider their ACTs or the SATs. It's based on character. And it, for example, last year, one young lady uh, who, I don't know how she did it, maintained a 4.0 average. She, uh, one parent is in prison and one has a drug problem. And uh, she has done really well. And we have a 99, almost 100% uh, graduation rate with this program through the various universities that these kids go to. And uh, it, it, makes me feel good that I, I'm able to participate in this because I'm looking be, for the future because uh, as you well know, sir, uh, you know, I'm kind of long in the tooth and um, I love this country and we have to depend on the ones that come after us to hold the values that we hold and to do the good things that uh, we've done. And so this is my way of paying it forward because as far as I'm concerned, I'm the luckiest human being that has ever been born on planet Earth. I am, uh, my wife and I uh, live nicely. We live in a nice house, a nice environment. I mean, I can't, I'm not Bill Gates or anything, but, and so I feel like I'm obligated because good Lord, the good Lord has been so good to me that I, I should take some of that effort and treasure and and do something with it to pay it forward so some young person or some older person or someone with an intellectual disabled a disability can um, have a little better life now and maybe they can get together in the future when I'm gone and pay it forward also. And that's basically, and I must say that I do this in conjunction with my dear wife, Margaret. So. Um, 
that's about my life in a nutshell, sir. That's a wonderful rundown, Mike. But let me ask you a couple more, a couple of questions. One is, having received the Medal of Honor within the last few years, how it, how has that changed your life uh, uh, across the board? Well, um, I get invitations to go to places that I all from all over the country. I, I went. I was going to quite a few uh, to support different activities, uh, military and uh, organizations and non-military that are connected with the service, and then other fundraising type organizations and schools. Uh, one of the things that I'm really uh, ex get excited for is I get a lot of invitations to go to speak to elementary and uh, high schools and um, and that is something that I do in conjunction with uh, the Medal of Honor Society in which we have a program and uh, we provide uh, a training that develops, it's a character development program. It, it stems around character development and patriotism. And that has given me the opportunity to talk to young people of how great this country is. Sir, you would not believe the people that nobody knows who they are or what they do, but without them, things just, this the whole railroad system here would go off the rails. They're just wonderful, wonderful, great human beings. And that's the thing that I like the best about with this medal now, that I've had the opportunity to find these people and to meet these people, and it's, it's really a joy. Our next step is to uh, present the Distinguished American Awards to the three people that are here. They're different because he's already received his for a couple of years ago. So we have two other awards there somewhere. All right, we'll bring them up, please, and present them to Ed and to uh, Pat. Uh, I wonder if we might show the audience what they look like. Would you pull them out, Ed, and take a look? So you'll see what they're about. Okay, so what, it's a small award, but what's there is the coin. This is a pure silver coin that was minted by the, uh, whoever do that, does that. They're no longer available. They met, met all them down, and it's a, it's a metal on a coin that was uh, produced about 10 years ago. And it's up there on a stand, and then we have her, a little plaque that talks about her being a distinguished American and Ed being a distinguished American also. So that's the award. Okay, now we have one other uh, event that I think we have coming up, and that's a present presentation by Russell Joel Brown and Keith Schaefer. And he's going to sing the first verse or so of God Bless America, and then we're going to ask everybody to join in. But don't join in on the first verse, <laughs> or he won't be able to do his solo. Thank you.
Well done. Before I, before I let you get out of here, I, I forgot to introduce our Marines in the back. These are members of the Marine Corps, Jimmy Dias Marine Corps League. Gary Smith, and I'm sorry about the other names I can't remember. Say it again. Okay. Stand up. And finally, I got, I got to say, oh, oh, yes, we have to unveil the Dias Award, and Nancy's going to do that. I think you all have seen this before, but it's a, it's a crystal display. It, it shows the emblem of the Medal of Honor, the Carnegie Medal, and the Boy Scout Award in there. And at the bottom, everybody who has been awarded that award is, gets a little plaque there. And the plaques are growing because we've been there for 13 years. And the final thing I want to say is I want to congratulate our three honorees for showing incredible flexibility in doing none of the things I asked them to do. And they did really, really well. And I think you all ought to come up and congratulate them for showing. For showing. In life, things often go wrong, and they went wrong tonight, but there was a great recovery, and I thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.